In today's video, I'm really excited to show you all about the new AR Foundation features Unity added for Meta Quest devices, which is provided by using an experimental package called the Meta OpenXR package. And this package currently implements the following AR features. Device tracking with HMD and controllers, camera component for pass-through features, plane detection, plane classification, brake cast, and anchors are also supported. So first, if you're not familiar with AR Foundation, that's completely fine. Let me explain what you can do with these powerful features today. With device tracking feature, you can get the headset position and also the rotation, as well as the controller's position and rotation by using a component called the track post driver from the new input system. Or you can also use the input system bindings for XR. The camera feature also allows you to access the camera from MetaQuest devices for pass-through functionality only. Here you can toggle pass-through on and off depending on the experience that you're building. Plane detection and plane classification features. This doesn't work exactly like it does with ARKit or ARCore, but it provides you with plane data capture during the meta room setup. So if you've done that with room setup already, then you should be good to go. Otherwise, you gotta go to settings, experimental, room setup, and select the setup button from your Quest operating system. Once this is done, try to use the AR plane manager and plane visualizers, and then you'll be able to see the render planes Plane classifications is also supported because Meta also provides a similar feature called semantic label component, which you tag during the room setup. This is information that basically the AR Foundation team is translating to use the standards available with the AR planes. Raycast feature is also supported and it allows you to determine where a ray defined by an origin and direction intersects with a trackable. This is demonstrated well with the simple AR demo provided by Unity, which was updated to use these new features. Lastly, the anchor feature also works with a new package, and anchors allows you to add a particular point in a space that you want your device to track. The device typically performs additional work to update the position and orientation of the anchor throughout its lifetime. Okay, so if this sounds great and all, but how can you set it all up, right? Well, let me jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that you need to do is just make sure that we satisfy the following requirements. Unity 2021.3 or newer is going to be required. I know that I have that because I have 2022.216 and now so these other versions. Just make sure that you go into installs on your Unity Hub to check that out. And then Air Foundation 5.1.0, pre.6 or newer. OpenXR 1.7 or newer will be required. I wouldn't worry too much about AR Foundation and OpenXR because the OpenXR package, which we're going to be installing, it's going to basically pull the correct dependencies, but I do want to make sure that you have the right Unity version. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is let's go ahead and clone a repo. This is gonna be the Unity Technologies AR Foundation samples which is gonna have one of the demos that we're going to need. Okay, so it looks like we got done with the cloning. Go ahead and click on a project, select your destination. And then this is gonna be where we're gonna to have to open the project from, just click on that. And this is using uh, basically a newer version, which is 2023, that one, that B14, which is a beta version. You can basically just change it to use the version, the latest version that you have. Now go into the package manager and we're gonna go and add a new package by name. Just make sure that you type in the com.unityxrmeta-openxr and click on add. Okay, so now you can see here that we have it listed and also the specific dependencies. Let's go into file and then build settings and just make sure that you get rid of all the different scenes that are available in the repo by default. We're gonna be adding basically two different ones. One of them is gonna be anchors. I'm gonna be duplicating this because we need to make some changes and just go ahead and drag and drop that into scenes. Then I'm also going to be grabbing the simple AR. Let's go ahead and drag it and drop it. We can just add that one as the first one and then anchors V2. This one is because they haven't updated it yet to use the new changes that are required for Meta. They did update the simple AR. I know they're working on anchors and that's going to be available probably by the time that you get to it. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do though is let's go ahead and switch this. We're gonna be using Android, so just to switch platform. Okay, so it looks like everything completed. Let's just change the compression to be ASTC, which is what Oculus currently recommends. Then what we need to do though is let's go ahead and go into player settings and we're gonna have to make a couple of changes in here. The first one is let's go into XR plugin management in here is where we're going to be telling the system 
what plugin provider we're going to be using. By default right now, we have Google AR Core. Let's go ahead and uncheck that because we're gonna to need to use OpenXR. Okay, so now let's go ahead and select OpenXR. You're gonna get this warning in here or error. Let's go ahead and just leave that for now and then just check the MetaQuest feature group. Then what you need to do is let's go ahead and click on it and it's gonna tell you all the things that we need to change. Basically, it's going to do it for us. So we can just do fix all. Okay, so we still have some issues in here, but that's okay. I think we still need to add a couple more things. Go into OpenXR. And you're gonna see that now we have basically this meta option in here. We need to click on the interaction profiles and basically add a new one, which is going to be called the Oculus Touch Controller Profile. So just click on that. Once you do that, you're gonna see that some of the errors are gonna go away. These are gonna be the two that you're gonna need, the Air Foundation MetaQuest features and also the MetaQuest support. Then go into player settings and in player settings, we're gonna have to make sure that we have a couple of things set. Make sure the color space is currently set to linear. The Auto Graphics API, just go ahead and uncheck it. And then make sure that you're using OpenGL ES3. Sometimes you're gonna see Vulkan in here. As long as you have this one first, I think we should be good to go. Vulkan, I believe is still experimental, so I would recommend to use OpenGL version three. Then if you scroll down, we're gonna have to change also the Android minimum API level. This one, we're just gonna do Android 10 API level 29. And then you also wanna make sure that you're using IL2 CPP for the scripting backend. That's going to require to be able to deploy to the MetaQuest devices. And then also ARM64 needs to be enabled. Make sure that you're not doing the ARM v7. Some of these settings were already made by the project validation, but if you don't do that and you come in here, you're gonna see that a lot of this is not going to be set up correctly, but it looks like it's set up correctly. We don't have to do much other than, let's change this install location to automatic. So on this simple AR demo, if you look at the ARF XR Origin setup, and then if we expand this and go into XR Origin, a couple of things that were added, they added the controller device monitor. Basically, if the controller is not detected, they hide it, and then if it's detected, they basically show it. They also added these different capabilities for the Raycast event controller. They're using basically an scriptable object to raise an event. And then the AR place object also changed. So a lot of these was already changed to be able to work with the controller. So if you go ahead and expand this, and then expand this, you're gonna see that we now have a left hand and also a right hand. I recommend to look at the airplane manager and if you wanna use classifications, you can basically just change this to be using the classification visualizer, which is called the airplane classification visualizer. If you wanna go back to the other one, you can just basically use the airplane debug visualizer. So let me show you how that works. All right, so the next thing that I wanna show you is how you can do the pass-through. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this toggle pass-through feature, which I added. And this is basically a script that I created to toggle the AR camera manager on and off. So just go ahead and drag it and drop it. And I'll be putting these in GitHub so that you guys can access it. So just make sure that you look for the repo on the description of this video. So once you do that, all you need to do is just basically, you can add it to any component, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna add it to the XR origin. Let's go ahead and drag it and drop it there. And now you're gonna see it here, which is called toggle pass through. So if you go into it, I'll show you what it does. It's fairly simple. Basically it takes in an input action property, which is going to allow us to toggle it with the trigger button on the controller. And then I also have a reference to the AR camera manager. If you go down here, I'm basically binding to it on the on enable and then I'm binding to it on the on disable. And then whenever we execute the action, the camera manager, as long as it's defined, we're going to basically toggle it by using the node operator. So the cool thing with the AR camera manager and pass through is if that component is disabled, pass through is no longer available. And then if it's enabled, then pass through becomes available, which is a lot easier to what you have to do by using the Oculus integration. So one thing that I didn't show you though is how you map the toggle action. So you can basically go here and then go into XRI right hand. Let's say that we wanted to do it on the right hand. And then we can say here, toggle pass through, and then you're gonna assign it to a button. In my case, I'm just going to use, we can just do the XR controller, and then you can do optional controls. 
and we can basically do the primary button which on the right controller I think that one is going to be the A button so just make sure that you know that and then what we can do though is we can go ahead and click on save asset once you do save asset we should have it available in here so now what we need to do is we can go back in here and then we can just say use a reference and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say pass through and then you're going to see that now we can map it to basically that button. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to test anchors. So we're going to go into our anchors V2. I'm going to have to make a couple of changes in here. So the first change is going to allow us to basically track some of the controller events. So just go ahead and expand camera offset. And we're going to go in here to the left hand controller. Just make sure that you click on this preset. If you don't see any presets, which is what I don't see right now, it's because we haven't really added the samples. So go into Windows and then Package Manager. And if you go into the XR Interaction Toolkit, just click on Samples and import the started assets. I like to do it this way because this started assets provides all the different input actions that Unity already mapped. We don't have to do that from scratch. So that's going to save us some time. Once you do that, you're gonna see that now we have the samples folder, started assets, and there's gonna be a lot of different presets in here that we can use. So if you go back into the left hand, and then click on this bound. Now we can see, oh yeah, for the left controller, we can select that and now all different bindings for our inputs are going to be populated. So on the model parent, just set it to the left hand controller. I also like to use a model prefab, which they also have in here. Let me see if I can find it. Go into Unity. Actually, it's going to be XR Origin Pieces. And they have a controller that I like to use. So we can go back down in here and then just associate that. That way we can see controllers when we're running this. We also need to change a couple of things on the main camera. So go up in here, and this is something that you could do on as you integrate it into your own project. So it's actually a good thing that we're doing this. Just change the actual background to be, basically the alpha needs to be zero because we're gonna be using pass through and clear flags is gonna to have to be set to solid color, which is what we currently have it set to. So that should get you going with, you know, what we need to do here on the different components. The other thing is Unity hasn't updated this to work with the, basically with the controllers, right? They're making updates right now. And I know that because I've been talking to them about it. So this anchor creator is not going to work if you were to press the trigger button on the controller. So I have a new version for now that you can use to test it. So if you go back into a script, so let me collapse this, then we can add that script. It's gonna be anchor creator and I'll walk you through what changes I made to the script so that you know what needs to happen. If you needed to do it yourself, you can look at it or understand how this process works. So the first thing is I pass in an input action reference that is very similar to what Unity made on the simple AR scene. You also need to specify basically a trackable type so that when we do a rate cast, we know the, what kind of trackables we're going to be doing a hit from. Then the other thing that I also do though is if you go down here, I also have different bindings for the on enable and also the on disable. I believe Unity also have one for the time where you tap on the screen. In my case, I just wanted to test it on the meta quest. So in my case, I only wanted to do that on the right trigger press action and also on the, on the left one. So just make sure that you do that if you needed to do that. I have one for the right trigger, one for the left trigger and also on binding that information on the on disable. So if you scroll down, I also had to make a couple different methods in here to be able to basically compose a pose. So if you look at it, we're creating a pose and we're getting the actual right hand position from the action by reading a vector three. Also the rotation by getting the quaternion for the specific hand. I do that for the right hand, also for the left hand. And then lastly, we just basically check, okay, we have that hand pose, we create a ray. And then from that ray, we try to check and see if we, well, we don't try, we actually do a ray cast against it and if we do collide with a trackable type which is designated above then we can create an anchor the create anchor method is very similar to what we already had in here i just had to remove a couple of things all right guys so that wraps up all the different features that i wanted to show you available on this new meta openxr package again this is experimental just make sure that you use it for prototyping for testing 
early on. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned today, let me know in the comments. And also be sure to hit the notification bell, subscribe if you can, and let me know again if you have any questions. Thank you very much, guys.